seems to be a running theme with all our videos. We have a train going by in the background. Uh, so in the workshop today, we've got this Georgian corner cabinet. It's a lovely uh, quarter round cabinet with mahogany boarded inlay around the doors. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of restoration work on this, this cabinet, uh, this hanging corner cupboard. Uh, I say it's Georgian, dates from sort of late George III. There are a few things that we need to sort out. There is a pencil beading here, a little moulding on the bottom of the door that needs replacing, that's missing here. And the best way to do that is to take the door off to do that. There's also alongside it some loose veneer here that needs to be re glued back down. We might be able to heat the original animal glue that's underneath it uh, and get that to stick back down. Or we might inject some of our own Scotch animal glue into uh, underneath the veneer and then glue it down flat. But I want to show how we were sort of going about taking the door off and also uh, what the, the primary purpose of, of, of this video is to show again it's about the wax polish again how it can revive a piece of furniture without having to do any major furniture restoration so this one's just come out of our store it hasn't had anything done to it it could we could restore it and repolish it but I don't think it deserves it all it needs is a really good wax polishing uh, and that is something I think anyone can do uh, you don't need to take it to a French polisher furniture restorer to do it. I know it's doing ourselves out of business here, but it's something that we can do here. Uh, you can do it at home. And I'm going to show how Gilboy's gold, uh, the antique gold, will transform this corner cupboard. We're not going to touch this side, I'm going to leave this side as it is. But this right hand door, I'm going to repolish or wax polish, but we're going to take it off. So I'm just going to quickly go and grab a screwdriver to get the, these hinges off, these H hinges off. Right. So taking screws off of, old screws off of furniture is sometimes quite difficult. Uh, first of all, really want to do is make sure that the groove in the screws is clear. So this slot in the slot head screw is clear of any debris. To do that, you use a smaller screwdriver uh, to the dog scratching itself. All right, Reg, stop that now. Thanks. Uh, is to get a small screwdriver and dig out any residue out of the slot. The chances are it's probably stuck in there fast and it's been in there for hundreds of years. So you might also, to be able to free up the screw, is use an old soldering iron, or a new soldering iron, and heat up the screw by holding the soldering iron to the top of the screw and get some warmth into it, and that will release it. Uh, once you've got the right size screwdriver, see if you can start working the screw loose. Now don't just turn um, in an anti-clockwise, turn it in the clockwise, try and work it, tighten the screw a little bit first and just work it and put a lot of pressure and then, look at that, it does come free. Now these screws more than likely haven't been out for hundreds of years. And keep them, don't throw them away. So I'm going to take off all of these uh, screws, I'm not going to bore you with that throughout the whole film, but um, I'll go ahead and do that now. Right, as you may have seen there, I had a little bit of trouble getting those hinges off, uh, the screws out rather. Uh, the first one came out quite well, the rest of them took a little bit of a while and you'd have been bored watching me try and get it out. But I did eventually get them all out and they're all in here, saved. And these are the 
H hinges that came off. Now I'm going to clean these up um, because they are really, really tarnished down. They're so tarnished down that they don't really distinguish much uh, against the the oak. There's not much of a contrast. Now there are people who say don't clean it, and there are people that say they do clean it. Um, it's entirely up to you. For us, for this purposes, I think they look really nice polished up. So I'm going to polish up these H hinges, these brass H hinges. Uh, I'm just going to show you how I do that. So I'm just going to grab some brass oak, a cloth, some wire wool, some brass oak. There we go. Start. Right, so we've cleaned one of the hinges, as you can see there. It's come up really nicely. Now, if you didn't want that to stay that shiny, just leave it. It will just tarnish down over time. Um, the other one's halfway through here. Um, but, right, I thought we'd move on. We'll move on to the door itself. And uh, now I can actually see this, uh, this pencil beading here that's sort of attached to the bottom of this door. It's in a pretty uh, sorry state, really. Um, so what we're going to do is just replace that whole section here rather than uh, just do little bits of it so there should be a complete piece like it was originally. We'll take this bead off, we'll keep this, we won't throw it away, um, it might be useful for other jobs but uh, I'll just ping it off now. I'm going to secure the uh, door down, I'm just gently going to secure the door down with this nice crack but I'm not going to, it's not going to be much pressure on the door itself just enough to hold it so there's no damage it's got a soft rubber shoe there on there so it's just enough so I can hopefully just tap this beading off Okay, so we've taken the door off. Um, I've glued the veneer down. Well, I didn't glue the veneer down. I've just used the old iron here and, and some paper. Brown paper is the best, so we had some white paper. And it's glued back down without me using any additional glue. So that's gone back down. Also, it's done is revived the old glue underneath that's. Uh, worked up with the heat from the iron uh, and this will all wax away when we apply the wax later on. I've taken the, uh, the beading off, it just fell apart, uh, it literally just fell off. Taking the nails off, the nails, some of those hand forged nails, they're handmade, tiny little tacks really. Uh, a lot of them broke off, I push those back in here, uh, just tap them back in, sanded the face and now we're ready to replace this bead which I'll keep this. Um, so we'll just mark it out. There's a nice piece of mahogany because the, the bead is made from mahogany. And we'll just roughly scribe um, the, the bead here to the shape of the door. Uh, so I'm going to pick the door up. Slide the door into place. Okay. This with a pencil, maybe if I come around this side, maybe easier to see. I'm just going to mark on the mahogany, holding the pencil flat down to the surface. So I want to raise part of the bead.
So we've done all the repairs to this door. The beading, as you see, is just going back on. I'm not going to colour polish this. I think the wax will do its work and colour this in. I'm going to put the brass that we cleaned up. Here's the brass, including the scutcheon that we took off. We're going to pin those back on. I'm going to screw those back on rather and pin the scutcheon back in. I'm going to rehang the door. One thing I must just mention, just briefly, is I said about cleaning brass. Be careful if your brass is gilt. If you have gilded brass, you'll see it because it looks like two colours of brass. Don't go cleaning that. That's the brass you want to leave because it's had a lovely gilded um, a gilt metal over the top of it. Gold leaf has gone over the top of it, so don't clean that. But these were okay. These were just brass hinges that weren't gilded. So uh, just a little note that I just want to point out. Right, okay, so we'll go back to uh, screwing back the, uh, these H-hinges. Right, okay, so here we are. We have the door has been reattached to the cabinet and we are ready to wax polish. Let's see, we've just done the brass, done the repair of the pencil beading, and now we're going to go straight over the top of what existing door. We still haven't touched anything to the woodwork. What we've done is just done the brass and a bit of repairs. So this is the bit you can do at home very, very easily. I'm going to use our antique gold for this. Again, using our wire wall, which we use all the time. It really is very, very soft stuff. This is the antique gold. I'm just going to bring the cover actually out here. Make it a bit easier for me to apply it. Um, I'm just going to dab it. I'm not worried about cleaning the face of it yet. I don't think it needs it. I'm going to. I'm fairly confident that the wax is going to cover over the majority of all these blemishes. Okay. All over. One thing I'm going to do, just while I'm here, I forgot to do that a second ago, is I'm going to put a mask on here. A dividing line. Okay. So it just matches in with this left hand side, which I'm going to leave alone. Okay. So this is paint, there's paint on the side of here, obviously, where it's been attached in the corner of a room and people have painted and it's gone onto the side of the cabinet and I, I can see the big patch of it here. It's just coming off actually. Yeah, it's just come off with my nails, just scratch it off. I'm not gonna be too precious around the brass. Don't mind there, that's been polished. When we go to buffing, it will buff away from the brass and any residue will come off on the cloth. Okay, I can see the colour coming back there. spots of paint on here. I'm being generous with the wax because it's really dry. This oak is really, really dry. If you were polishing this in the house, I mean, obviously I'd have some newspaper or something on the floor just to protect it from getting blobs of wax on the floor. You definitely want a dust sheet down. Right, here we go. Here's the repair that I did earlier on with the mahogany beading. I'm just going to be very generous and apply a lot of wax around that area. Onto the 
molding here. Just around this beading. Let's see what nice smear of wax around there. Right, onto the freeze up here. It's mahogany, crown mahogany in there. Another bead. Well, as we appear to be starting all of our videos with a train going by, I thought, well, what just happens to the train going by? Right, this is the morning after the night before. We polished this yesterday, we did all the repairs. This is the morning after, and here we are with one side of this bow front seat hanging corner cupboard, the Georgian one, ready to start buffing. So, here goes, let's see what effect we have and immediately immediately it just starts shining it never fails to surprise surprise me how good this polish is uh, when you get the right mix of ingredients uh, like we have in here so this is a blend of buck pastabi beeswax Miracle Wax, which is hand picked from the fruit of the Miracle Tree in the Andes. Carnuba Wax, which is the highest quality grade one Carnuba Wax that we put into our polish. It's the same Carnuba Wax that you use in the highest end of uh, car polishes. And why wouldn't you use it on furniture? I mean, it's just brilliant for it. Pure turpentine, pure natural pine turpentine. Japan wax, we blended and made our own recipe over many, many months to create this. And wow. Right, let's just do the freeze up here. It's a bit awkward sort of buffing it up this high, I'm going to be a bit lying down, but for the purposes of the film, you can see that the polishing cloth just touches the wood, uh, uh, it just touches the surface of where the polish has been applied, and it just comes to an immediate shine. There's a lovely depth, and that lovely sort of soft patination that you want from a wax. And of course, you could use this wax on fair wood, modern furniture, it will go on anything. Because of it's such a high content, <clears throat> the high content of wax that we put in there and that bled, that special bled that we've created, gives this finish. And anyone can do this. I mean, look at the difference between the two now. All the differences between this door and this door is wax polish, is Gilboy's gold. That's the only thing that's changed. We've done nothing else apart from applying our antique gold to this side and nothing here. It just shows what a really good quality polish can do for your furniture. If I just take off this masking tape I did yesterday. So you can see the line. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. It just easily buffs off the, the metalwork. And it's not a problem, it can go off the metalwork, why wouldn't it? It's probably a very good restorer for ironwork and metalwork and protect it and help it from stop it from oxidizing. 